Now, coming in at the number six ranking, it might shock you all, Brad. It might shock you. You might be like, what the hell? What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we are back with a brand new My Damn Thoughts episode on WWE Elite Series 101. We have officially crossed the threshold of Elite Series 100, and we're getting into Elite Series 101. I thought this set overall was pretty epic. I'm very excited for the ranking. I think that we, like, overall, the quality of this set is very good, and it will be remembered as so. And speaking of overall quality Elite Waves, the last few days, I've spent a lot of time on my ranking of Elite Series 1 all the way through 100 by series set and like overall set. And so all the dynamics that have went into that and that project and what I'm working on behind the scenes for that entire video should be a long video essay style thing with a bunch of editing, a lot of research, breaking it down, and we will rank Elite Series 1 through 100 from worst to best. So I'm excited about that video, but Elite 101 probably won't be included in that because I want to do 1 through 100 and since we're just past that, I really, I'm trying to get that done as fast as possible, but if you guys are unaware of what my damn thoughts is, it's basically where we take a WWE Elite Wave or an AEW Action Figure Wave and we break down the set, we rank it from worst to best, we reveal some of the details of the set, we break it down and give you my full in-depth thoughts of each figure. And if you guys missed individual reviews on all of these, we did do some two-in-ones. We reviewed Cody and KO together. We reviewed Mr. America slash Hulk Hogan and Sonya Deville together. And we reviewed Ricochet and Johnny Knoxville together. So definitely check out those reviews on the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. But diving into how we start off these My Damn Thoughts episodes is I give you my first thought on the set when it was revealed to us and my first thoughts were I was actually pretty hyped for it. I thought it was an interesting set. I thought we got a lot of holes filled here. Johnny Knoxville is a very clever and unique figure to the WWE Mattel line. Having an updated ricochet with double jointed arms and a new head sculpt is massive even if he does have effing Johnny Gargano syndrome. <sighs> Cody Rhodes returns to the WWE Elite line for the first time in like 70 sets, and it's in his updated American Nightmare revamped gimmick. We have Stone Cold Kevin Owens from his moment with Stone Cold Steve Austin. We have a beautifully updated Sonya Deville, and we have a whack formula, Mr. America, that a lot of people were wanting in their collections, even though it has a lot of inaccuracies that we don't like. So that was my first thoughts. Now let's get into who I think will be the shelf warmer in this set. Now, when you break down the full sets, usually women's figures are the shelf warmers in the set. Typically, there's not as many women action figure collectors as there are the men's wrestlers, which makes sense. I would say that the demographic for collecting WWE wrestling action figures is a majority of men, and a majority of the men are going to want to collect the guys that they enjoy watching the most, and you know, the trickle-down effect of that, but I think the shelf warmer in the set's going to be Sonya Deville, and that is no harp on this Sonya Deville, because I actually think this is a brilliant figure. I think it's damn good. It's got a lot of great paint detail on it. It has great accessories. It looks just like her. It's just unfortunately she's the female in the set and that tends to happen unless you just have a really plain Jane awful figure in there. So unfortunately it is going to be Sonya Deville. Now on the flip side of that, the hottest figure in the set is going to be my boy the America Nightmare, if you guys understand that reference. But Cody Rhodes is going to be the hottest figure in the set. I think being his first elite back, this is going to be one that's very sought after. He just won the Royal Rumble. I mean this guy is on top of the wrestling world right now. I would say up there with Roman Reigns, up there with your top guys in the business. Cody Rhodes is as hot as ever, and this is a beautiful looking figure. I like this figure a lot. Not a perfect Cody Rhodes by any stretch of the imagination, but this figure is going to be highly sought after, especially when you include the neck tat and all these different things. Double jointed arm Cody, Mattel Elite, his first updated Mattel Elite. This figure is going to fall out. Shows. People are going to want this figure a hell of a lot more than everybody else in this set. You could argue the Mr. America fans and, you know, the cool Ricochet and KO, but Cody Rhodes is by far the hottest figure in the set, Brad. Now, the chase figure in this set it's kind of boring, and that is going to be Mr. America. Now, Mr. America is the chase in the set. I do not own it just yet. I only typically go after chase. Like, of course, I want every WWE Mattel Elite, okay? Just for you guys' sake, for sure. I want to be able to showcase every WWE Elite to the audience that follows the channel. But this is not a chase that I'm particularly interested in. If you want to go back to Elite 99 Brock Lesnar, that was a chase that I was really excited for. The Andre the Giant Elite 100 chase is one that I was excited for. There are chases that I absolutely want to try 
track down. But this is one of those cases where I'm not that hyped for it. I think, you know, there's no, barely any differences. It's like a knee pad and a mask. That's basically what you get differently there. And I think that Cody Rhodes or Ricochet or Kevin Owens, hell, even, even him would have benefited way more from a chase figure. So those are my stances on the chase figure in this set. But Hulk Hogan or Mr. America is our chase for the WWE Elite Series 101 set. Now, when we get into the best head sculpt, I think you have a couple guys that this could go to. However, I'm going with Sonya Deville. Now, a lot of people probably gonna be like, good God, what are you thinking? Look at that face sculpt. Well, it looks just like her, okay? Her facial expression is very odd. I'll be right there with you. I'll be in the front row for that, Brad. But no, this head sculpt is still very, very good. As odd as it is, as weird as the facial expression is, it's still a damn good head sculpt. It looks just like her. The hair looks good. The facial sculpture looks good. The makeup looks good. I feel like they don't really ever include the women's makeup on these figures most of the time, but I feel like they nailed it in this case with Sonya Deville. I think she does have the best head sculpt. You could probably argue Knoxville. You could probably argue Mr. America. You might could even argue the Stone Cold Steve Austin yelling head sculpt for KO, and maybe even Ricochet, but so Sonya Deville is the one I'm going with. Next up, we have the best articulation in the set, and that, for me, is gonna go to Cody Rhodes once again. He has double-jointed arms. He's on ball joints, double-jointed knee. Just feels so good, man. I mean, he just gives you that very classic feel. He's buttery smooth from the shoulder. Like, this is easily the best feeling figure in the hand in the set. Ricochet is up there. You, If you said Ricochet, I could, I could, you know what I'm saying? I could, I could meet you there, probably. You might have an argument, but I think the belt might hinder him just a hair, but everybody else is not on the Cody Rhodes level, man. The Cody Rhodes is the best feeling in the hand, and it also is the best articulated. I think you can get him into any pose. I don't think you're going to have any issues whatsoever, and while I'm looking at this figure, bro, this belt's god awful. Look at it just falling off. I put it the tightest it can go, and it's just falling right off of him, bro. Please fix the belt in 2023. I think they will with that new Hogan formula we have coming. I think they are going to fix it. Now, on the flip side of the set with the best articulation, man, we got to get into the worst articulation. Now, this is going to come down to two people, and for me, it's going to be between KO and Sonya Deville. Now, KO, as everyone knows, has virtually no ab crunch. He just doesn't have good ab crunch, man. It's just because he has that molded shirt over it, but he is on ball joints. Like, he's got, he can pose around. A lot of people that pick fed or pose around their figures a lot will tell you, you can get some pretty nice poses out of the KO figure. It's just that ab crunch isn't the best compared to everybody else in the set, and then the Sonya Deville is a women's figure, so the ab crunch is non-existent as well. She's also on ball joints. She has a great upper thigh cut, double jointed knee. I mean, probably at the end of the day, you'd probably say KO has the worst just because of the stomach problem. And I guess you could give it to KO. I'm gonna give it to KO at the final. I think Sonya Deville, you could probably post her around just a tad more. And you know, I love the K I love KO figures. I think they're fantastic, especially the updated formula. But yeah, I think I think Sonya Deville would take this one. I think Kevin Owens, yeah, I think Sonya Deville beats him out by just slightly. So I think I would go with the Kevin Owens as the worst articulation in the set. Now getting into the best accessory in this set. I thought you had a few things you could throw in here, but I ultimately went with Sonya Deville's jacket. Sonya Deville's jacket is fantastic, bro. You get this cloth goods here. You get these like chains and, and the buckles going around the entire deal here. You got it wrapping around. It's very well formed. It fits the figure nice. It's got the Velcro in the front. This is the kind of stuff collectors want to see, man. No doubt about it. People want to see this kinds of stuff. This is absolutely beautiful. I think they nailed it. It is beautiful. I thought maybe, you know, the Intercontinental Championship with Ricochet is also a good accessory. I like Mr. America's shirt. The Austin 316 shirt is also very good, but I think the the details and the and the goods that you get there on the Sonya Deville shirt is just bar none, so I went with her jacket as the best accessory from Elite Series 101. Now it is time to rank this set from worst to best. And if you guys are unaware of my criteria for the ranking, lots of things go into this. Excitement level for the figure when it's announced and like the preview like waiting on the figure definitely comes into play. I think it's that related to like execution and and like how well it lived up to the hype. You have how well it moves in hand or how well it feels in hand. Likeness to the character on WWE television. Formula, parts choices, accessories, head sculpts. All of these things play a part and a major role in ranking the WWE Elite figures in these videos. And remember, this is my ranking and just because a figure is number 6 and the dead last figure in the ranking doesn't mean that it's the worst figure of all time and there's no redeeming qualities about the figure whatsoever. And just because a figure is number one does not mean that it doesn't have any faults whatsoever and it is just the greatest figure of all time. So now that we have covered these base rules, remember, these are my damn thoughts. Not your damn thoughts. Now coming in at the number six ranking, it might shock you all, Brad. It might shock you. You might be like, what the hell? I went with Mr. America. Yep, 
I sure did, Brad. Honestly, and I, it honestly pains me because I actually like the figure. I like the colors. I love the mast head sculpt. It is a bit weird when you look under there and you can't see a nose and it's just a blue triangle. But I think the head sculpts are really good. I like that you get all these different accessories. The torso and the, and the skin tone. Oh... Uh. The torso and the skin tone is the biggest issue I have with the figure, and I almost feel like a lot of these Hulk Hogan's we've gotten over the last year or two that do not have the updated torso or the right torso, and they don't have the updated skin tone, they're just going to look so weird and obsolete up next to the new torso and skin tone that we're going to be getting in this year and into next year. So that uh, that docks this figure a lot for me, and it really like puts me off the Hogan's that they're not completely accurate, and it bothers me a whole lot. And compared to his peers in this set, everybody else is accurate in this set, and it's really hard to compare. Coming in at number five was a damn banger, and it's a great women's figure, Brad. It's going to be Sonya Deville. This is going to be one of the better women's figures of the entire year. I can just bet money on it right now if you guys want to start a betting line with me. This Sonya Deville is going to be up there. It moves around well. It looks like her. Great jacket, great head sculpt, great attire. I love the shininess of the figure. I like the dullness of the figure, like the way they have the shiny material and the matte material. The boots are really well. She poses great. Fantastic figure. I just think that the rest of the figures in the set, I would rather have more and that takes me into number four which is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time i think i can honestly say that i just appreciate this guy so much he's so damn good top five performer in the world i've said it for damn near eight years now that's gonna be kevin owens in the stone cold kevin owens gear you know i'm i think it's cool to have this figure i'm not gonna leave him like this i think i'm gonna we're gonna do some action figure surgery with him we're gonna fix him up a little bit and do some different things and i think it's gonna be better for my collection personally which i'm really excited about which will show showcase later on but i like this ko coming into this figure i was not hyped about the head sculpt i thought it looked pretty derpy but getting it at hand getting it in hand looks a hell of a lot better than it did in the promo images it's honestly ridiculous how much better the figure looks in person but while it's not my favorite gear and things like that it did hurt the figure even though i still think it's damn good i love kevin owens coming in at number three we have jonath knoxvillian and this figure is so fun man you talk about a great figure and if i was not a johnny knoxville fan i'd probably be a little bit you know a tarnished on the figure, but I've always been a big fan of Johnny Knoxville and his work, even though I don't think he belongs in wrestling. The match was fantastic. He's a goofball. They really executed this figure well. I love all the new sculpts and details we have here. Hate the Cena shoe mold Chuck converses, but damn, what a fun figure. Great head sculpt. Looks just like the character. Great formula. I think they captured his his leanness and how small he is. It's just, it's an excellent figure, man. Great figure by Mattel. Really enjoyed the Johnny Knoxville. Coming into number two and one, you guys can might be able to see where this is going but, but I went Ricochet number two and the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes at number one I uh, just love the Ricochet so much I think it was desperately needed to have an updated Ricochet with double jointed arms it's a great head sculpt I love the gear even though he has Johnny Gargano Syndrome even if he didn't have Johnny Gargano Syndrome he still would be here at number two I think it, that figure is that damn good and we are going to fix him up on surgery somehow Cody Rhodes is just so good and I, I, I just love Cody I love Cody I love this figure. I think that the head sculpt is not the greatest. I hate how they did the tattoo on the jawline. I think that was a dumb move. Overall, feel in the hand, how it looks, representing Cody. I love that they went with the classic Cody formula. I just love the figure so much, and it represents Cody really, really well. I think once they fix that weight belt, once they get a newer head sculpt in here, we get some different gears in here, man. That figure is going to be off the chain, and I very much look forward to his ultimate this year. That, that is one of the figures I'm most looking forward to in this year. I cannot wait to review that for you guys. How However, that is going to wrap up my damn thoughts on WWE Elite Series 101, man. I would love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below. How are you guys feeling about this set? You think this set's good? You think it's trash? Or did you rank this set? These are my damn thoughts, but I want all of your damn thoughts down in the comment section below. But I am going to get out of here, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. If you guys missed out on our videos over the last few days, please go check them out. The unbelievable unboxing yesterday we had. We had some AEW action figure news. An insane toy hunt at the wrestling shop in San Antonio, Texas, and my Royal Rumble vlog where I sat front row with a ridiculous weekend, man. You gotta go check it out on the channel, but I appreciate you so very much for watching. We have exciting things behind the scenes in the works that we are gonna be announcing, hopefully, by the end of the week that uh, I'm, I'm very hyped about. So, that's gonna wrap it up, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you next time. We'll never be